This is the redemption arc to the top 10 best Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. As some time has fermented and the calls of comments came flooding in from the last videos, I decided it was time to take a small backseat and just go with the community and compare the 10 most popularly mentioned Pokemon in the comments on both the best and worst lists that were praised highly or defended. These are the 10 Pokemon you all brought up as being the best, and while I know some of these are ones being defended because I mentioned them in the worst list, almost all of them are ones that were said to be missed as being some of the best in this generation of such a small village of Pokemon. Also, there's one Pokemon I had to apologize and make up for, so I thought this video would suit. <clears throat> so just like that, here we are making a classic YouTube apology video. Welcome to the Top 10 Best, capitalized because it's definitely correct this time, Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Number 10, Ponyta. With Galarian Ponyta being one of the Pokemon asked to be traded the most, I can imagine its popularity runs a lot higher than I gave it credit for. The Cinderella before it puts its shoes on and becomes a fairy Pokemon does bring a wondrous amount of color to the new games. It's only available in Pokemon Shield, however, and seeing as a lot of people went for Sword, I can see why there's an influx of trade requests being asked for the magical animal. I wasn't entirely sure why it was a version exclusive Pokemon in Pokemon Sword, but then I realized it made sense because the My Little Pony fanbase is incredibly defensive. I can acknowledge how it's a popular pick, as not only does it give off the cute appeal for everyone to like, it also gave off the promise of a form to Rapidash, which has been one of the Pokemon waiting to receive a new form, and has a large amount of Mega Evolution fan art. Galarian Ponyta also manages to bring in some newly highlighted nostalgia from the old days of Gen 1, when it was a simpler time of thinking there was only 150 Pokemon, as if Mew was just cut from the decks. It brings its own form of heat in its design, and it's a rather appealing Pokemon to maintain some stable in gameplay. Also, it got its fairy typing with Rapidash, so we're pleased with that decision. Number 9. Frostmoth A well-designed Pokemon in Frostmoth, who does look to be a bit of a hidden popular pick amongst fans, laid in as one of the top light comments for a Pokemon to be included in the best new Pokemon of Generation 8. I only say it's a bit hidden, as while there are times where bug Pokemon can be incredibly popular, it's a lot harder to obtain that status as a bug, and with the competition of so many differently designed and decently made bugs introduced in the Sword and Shield, it can be hard to maintain the frames of your love for them all. But Frostmoth manages to take a wonderful approach with the beauty of ice combined with the graceful look a more soothing insect would have. Float like an ice cube, sting like an in-game layer that's not loading properly. I am on the train of liking the addition of this Pokemon, and seems like a fun one to run through the games with its high special attack as long as you don't have to deal with Stealth Rocks. The poor demise of bugs galore. Number 8. Dracovish You know, I get it, maybe ripped a little too hard on the LEGO Fossil Pokemon, and with Water Dragons being a super rare typing, it's a Pokemon that has to be defended in the comments. I can appreciate it as some interpretive art or an ancient Egyptian hieroglyphic drawing, so the juxtaposition from normal looking Pokemon can be seen in its archaic design of detached to reattached parts. It also does seem like a strong Pokemon in its build and stats. It was way high up on the list of Pokemon being defended, and while the fossil Pokemon do receive a lot of hate, like a lot, I mean I guess I was also a part of that, there's a much larger than expected group of people who like this Pokemon, and in comparison, the technical term of best at least applies to it. Number 7. Arctazult You know who got defended more than Dracovish? Arctazult. I really did not think anyone would comment this as their favorite, but here we are. I mean, I can see the sympathy vote for Arctazult, as it's simultaneously being shocked by a current and looks to be shivering. Also, its nose is dripping. Could someone get some tissues? I would have thought Arctavish would have been the most popular out of the four, but this one takes the cake. I get the whole lore of Pokemon being placed together piece by piece to try and recreate them into their original forms, so hopefully they come out as the actual four guardians of the region when they're properly restored or put together in the next installments of the games with Pokemon Ultra Sharp Slash and Pokemon Shielded from Reality. It was by far one of the top three defended Pokemon on my previous Worst of Generation 8 Pokemon list. I've mentioned it as a favorite so many more times than I could count. I guess I can kind of see it. It does have at least a humorous ice cube body and a happily excited demeanor for its skinny Zapdos head and remotely trapped arms. Maybe more of an ironic best, but one I won't rip on someone for liking. Number 6. Zacian I can imagine with me mentioning Eternatus in the last best of Pokemon Sword and Shield, a little debate on the other legendaries would pop up. And with so many ballots to put into the vote, Zacian came out on top. I mean, they're all the best in their own ways as the new legendary Pokemon each have their own appeal, and while I love Zamazenta on its own, just like this shiny video, we're gonna have to shaft it again for Zacian. I'm sorry, my shielded warrior. Zacian seems to be the popular pick, and it does make sense that there are a lot more Pokemon Sword Let's Plays than Pokemon Shield ones. Of course, I completely approve of anyone liking Zamazenta and Pokemon Shield more. I mean, it does seem like people would go for the more aggressive Sword over Shield. Shouts to my wallers out there who go on the defensive, though. You're still cool. 
but the aggressive approach that always seems to be the more popular go-to usually gets picked up with the Sword and Zacian, and does happen to be in the first game you say when titling your videos about Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's always the one that's common to say first that gets a little bit more popular than the other, even if both are liked, and basically the same game with a different picture on the front. It's just nice to list them in the order that's a bit more phonetically pleasing to say. Red, then Blue, Sword, then Shield, Digimon, then Pokemon. Wow, the regret from saying that just hit me immediately. I do agree it deserves a spot on the list of 10 best Pokemon out of the 80 choices you have, so I see how it would spark some outrage over not being included. Number 5. Grimmsnarl Grimmsnarl is a part of this, as I know the Impotent line was a much sought after one, but this is mostly to have more Grim on the list. A lot more people than I thought would like this Pokemon, I don't think it's that bad, but there is a lot of love just for the middle evolution of this line with its edgy look and growth phase that I wasn't expecting. I mean, it makes sense after the Great Sword and Shield War of 2019 between the two nations of the Game Freakers and the Nat Dexters, so after all the heated arguments, you might want a good representing Pokemon to relate to and cool off with. I mean, Grimmsnarl I can see, you like Dark, Fairy, Impidip's line goes all the way to 3 Pokemon, it can be decently strong, so I wouldn't put Grimmsnarl on a worse list, but I have now learned there is no leeway for Morgrim to be roasted even just a little bit. Shoutouts to the fan of the 3 Limp Imps. Number 4. Scentiscorch. I had to do it for you all. Scentiscorch was a hugely missed Pokemon from the best list, and with the top like comments, flurry of replies, and single comments on their own just coming at accurate carrier pigeon speeds, I had to put it on the list for the whole community. I mean, Sislipede has its own challenge of being caught with a low chance of even encountering one and eating Flame Body on the first person you have to attract it in the wild. And after a struggle like trying to find one, it has its own unique appeal of growing into Scentiscorch, the fire bug Pokemon of the new generation. They're done pretty well together. The fruit by the foot design is meshed out nicely, and the fire is added well to soothe the soul and not be overplayed like After Effects animations just thrown everywhere. It's a clear top kind of Pokemon in this century that manages to not be overshadowed by the other notable fire bug and stand out on its own. That's a pretty good feat with how popular Volcarona is. Just a little section before we get into the top 3 of this list, with an honorable mention to our little boy Opsigoon. Three people commented about it while I was recording this so I had to give it some love. An honorable design. Number 3. Persicur. Really? I wasn't sure here. I get the dislike for Alolan Persian. I don't think it's that great. Alolan Meowth might as well be, well, just recolored. But Persicur? Like, number one on this list was my fault entirely. And while I can't appreciate Persicur from another point of view than just what I said, I didn't expect that big of a response. I don't think Persicur is that bad to where it's like lactose intolerant so you can't enjoy a vanillish dislikable, but so many people said it was one of their favorite Pokemon, which I was not expecting. I know there are some people who say that the quality of Pokemon has gone down and we don't have many to choose from so we're just really settling with what we've got, and that's somewhat true both in statement and that I'm literally saying it out loud into a microphone right now, but you know, I guess I can relate to the appeal. The more mischievous, might steal your wallet when you're not looking kind of look, and as a jokester Pokemon, that's surprising as we didn't expect they'd make a new evolution for Meowth that isn't a Persian version. Is it fair to call Galarian Meowth Glam Meowth, or is that just too apparent of a hint towards Generation 4 remakes? I was expecting like maybe a skew to be defended, but in hindsight I do understand how Persecure could be one of the best, in its funky look, it might be something to look forward to of how it acts in the anime. Number 2. Wooloo The most ass Pokemon that wasn't on either list. Where's Wooloo is my new text notification. But Wooloo is not a Woo loser, it's a win lure. Cause not as many people mention Yapper over Wooloo so that's just a defaulted vote. Oh wait I mentioned Bolton, I guess that kinda counts. Wooloo is just one of those Pokemon people were incredibly happy to see, and I do admire the cute approach. But obviously it can be hard to put them on a best Pokemon list just for being cute, with all the judgement and shame. Although I do try to add at least one in. Had to shout out to all the fans there, I knew Wooloo was popular with it being one of the most popular little Pokemon to put on thumbnails, so the little ball of fluff prevails in the hearts of many. Imagine if they made another fossil Pokemon but it was Wooloo as Eldegross's puff hair. I can see Wooloo as one of the most remembered Pokemon from this generation, and a well-designed animal Pokemon to put in with the group of dogs, cats, and sheep, so while it may turn into a black sheep, it's definitely not the black sheep of the bunch. Number 1. Phalanx. You know, this was definitely my fault here, not even gonna sugarcoat it, may or may not have seen something completely different from what it was and thought that that was about it for this guy, but now that I have been cleansed over to the Phalanx side with factual in-game footage, I do see the greatness this Pokemon has to offer. To be fair, this is another case of thinking it should be something when it isn't, like Raikou, Suicune, and Entei as dogs, or Zubat as a fun encounter. But as I have now learned, this Pokemon is a creation of a formation by the soldiers where they surround themselves in armor and continue in a conga line known as the Fa Trojan Horse. 
Knowing what Phalanx truly is on the inside, both as it scurries into multiple units and how it is as a Pokemon, makes it leagues better and condemns my first impression. Each of them have their own eyes and has some great animations where it comes apart like little black bulbas in suits of arbor and choreographed forms of sequential dances. It is another Pokemon like Execute where all the little forms are in one Pokedex entry and while I still think it'd be cool for them to all get together and evolve into a Gigantamax Melmetal form but as Pantheon, it's a great Pokemon on its own when seen in the game and deserves the number one spot which is how many people came out to say it was one of the best in the generation. It's nice to learn the sparkle everyone sees in this fighter as one of the unique endgame Pokemon. And while I did happen to put it on a worst list at one point and have to learn how others saw it, you know what they say, Rome wasn't built in a day but my incorrect opinions were. Thanks for tuning in again and glad to see you all here. Really enjoying interacting with you all and I'm hoping everyone's having a good time. I'll definitely make sure to look over the comments of all these videos and please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to help me out as well as checking out any of the videos you see here on the screen. Until next time, see you then.